functional modeling part. This is a really big chapter and really basic chapter of, let's say, modern trees. By the way, there are like two school of thoughts. One is called classical trees with all this ideal final result, contradiction analysis, and trends of technical system evolution. I would say it's more strategic. It's more like spiritual. It helps you to improve a system, but you don't know exactly what to do to improve this or this system. It focuses on some very, let's say, the fundamental uh, function of the system and tries to kill it, but keeps the function the same. At the same time, the modern trees is, is based on the concept, let's say, on approach, how to take a product, to model it part by part, and try to, to modify the system to make it better. So function modeling is a basic concept to be used for this approach. You are given a product, you model it element by element, you model interactions, you model functions within the element, and you try to modify this, uh, this, this, this model in order to make the system better. It could somehow be, re be, be reflected as, as finite element method, method in, uh, in mechanics when you have a system and then you model it by one million of elements. Okay, the core concept of, of, uh, of functional modeling is uh, function. The function is legitimate when you have two material objects, they interact, interact they touch each other, and there is a, a parameter of function recipients that has been changed or maintained as a result of this function. Although it sounds pretty inoffensive, but I would say you will see how this definition of function uh, helps you to get rid of thinking inertia, of conventional understanding of some functions that are just ghost functions, that don't, they don't do actually, they don't do anything. Uh, so uh, it will help you to come up with a definition of functions that would force you to think about inventive design. some speculation on the history of the concept of functional modeling. Uh, there was nothing in ancient China, unfortunately, but I think in the middle of, of the last century, uh, the concept of cybernetics appeared, uh, a, a system analysis concept appeared, and the concept of black box, sorry, black box appeared. Uh, in this concept, it was believed that anything could be somehow represented as a black box, and in which black, uh, the black, this uh, black box had some inputs and outputs. That was basic uh, concept of, of cybernetics, where typically the black box uh, was described, the behavior of uh, black box was described by virtue of differential equations or other equations. Uh, in this way, I would say that the concept, uh, the, the function model, it follows the same way. It somehow tells you that any, any, any engineering system should be or can be represented by, uh, by a, a, a set of black boxes that are called elements of technical system. We don't care of the, of the certain design of these elements, but we care on function of this, of this element. The difference with cybernetics or system analysis is, is that typically it is in cybernetics, it believes that there is input-output relationship. While uh, for function modeling, uh, the element generates some function, and it also can be a, a function recipient. So uh, uh, incoming errors for function modeling are not, let's say, input signals. They are just actions the subject is, uh, uh, the, the object is uh, influenced by. And outcoming uh, errors are not output signals. Uh, these are functions to, uh, to, that are describing the, the functioning of, of, of the element. What are the links of uh, the concept of function or function analysis to other elements of trees or some elements of uh, design, systematic design outside of trees? In trees, of course, ideal final result is the strongest because uh, if the function is well defined, then the formulation of ideal final result will be also correct. Ideally, there is no system, but the function is ensured. So the function has to be carefully formulated, and the contribution of a formal approach of a formulation of a function, from a function analysis helps a lot. So, ideal final result. Uh, contradictions. 
when you have your function modeling done, you have a list of functions within the system. There are some useful functions and harmful functions. Coexistence of useful and harmful functions in one element or a different parts of one technical system could be also treated as a contradiction. So definitely, if you get rid of the contradictions, keeping keep fu good functions, but get rid of bad functions, and you are eliminating contradictions. So it also helps you kind of systematically discover contradictions that exist within your system. And uh, maybe trimming. Of course, there is a stronger uh, a consequence. Uh, the consequ uh, so the, the tool that is uh, used immediately after function analysis. In function analysis, you built up a model. But this model doesn't help you to improve. It's just a way to represent your system. So uh, as in mechanics and chemistry uh, and in, in electromagnetics, when you have a model, there are certain formal rules how to modify this model to make it better. So trimming helps you to make systems simpler. It helps you to trim one element to after another element, uh, going toward ideal final result, making system cheaper, simpler, easy to manufacture, easy to maintain. Okay. These uh, were the links to internal trees parts, modern trees and classical trees. What are the links or the bridges to, uh, I would say, outside tools, outside of trees? I would make two big bridges. <laughs> One bridge is to the concept of um, uh, functional analysis of uh, National Institute of Standards of America. So if you browse this and you just, if you already know it, you can, you can see that the concept of functional representation of complex technical system uh, somehow coincides with the concept of uh, functional analysis in trees with one very important difference. The definition, the list of eligible functions is much bigger. So in that standard, unfortunately for trees, uh, there is not, uh, there are functions like to measure or to protect or to lubricate that are not uh, really legitimate from the point of view of trees. Another bridge would be uh, the standard of analysis of, let's say, uh, organization in the format of IDEF, especially management consultants know this, this approach, when uh, every organization is somehow dismantled into departments, let's say, or some small units, and these units are modeled like a black boxes, and these block, black boxes have standard inputs and outputs. There are input flow, there is output flow, there are some controls, and there are some resources needed. And uh, I would say it somehow resembles this kind of black box or a cybernetic representation of a technical system uh, that, is, uh, that is used in functional a uh, analysis with one big difference. It is not a flow of, let's say, of a document or an energy through, through the system, but it is a flow of functions through the system. So the biggest difference is that in IDEF, as an IDF diagram you have flows of, of matters through the system or flows of information through organization while in a functional model you have like a let me put it like a flow of functions through the model okay you describe functional interconnection between the system these were the links of the concept of functionality or the function itself to other parts of trees or to some uh, other tools outside of trees Hopefully we went through a big chapter of modern trees that is called function analysis. Why this chapter is very important? First of all, it brings you the definition of function. So it will be a kind of function-oriented analysis of system. The function is legitimate when there are two elements, they interact, and the, a parameter of function recipient has been changed or maintained. This helps a lot uh, to analysis of, let's say, what is really happening in the engineering system. It helps you to formulate ideal final result correctly and so on and so on. So the central part of, of trees is functionality. It's not just certain material design, but functionality and functional analysis puts it the very, from the very beginning. Uh, another, let's say, point of importance for functionality or function analysis is, they'll say, it provides you a framework to work together for, for a, a team of engineers of various backgrounds. So it helps uh, just to, kind of, to have a kind of common ground to, to, uh, to represent the interconnections of, of, in a system that could be of uh, 
magnetic matter, that could be of uh, mechanical matter, that could be of uh, chemical background, in the same kind of standardized way, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary way that is called function model. It is not easy. Sometimes it requires some extra R&D work to understand the functioning of the system, but that's exactly what we need when we have a real product, a real project, and we need some real improvement of it. Sometimes uh, it takes hours, weeks, uh, if not months, in order to agree on functioning of, th of this or, or that system being uh, analyzed and uh, to come up with a functional function model of it. When you are done with your function model, you can do a lot of things. Uh, you can uh, uh, make systems simply applying trimming. You can eliminate contradictions, you can analyze contradictions, and you can get rid of the making system again simpler, better, or more ideal. And uh, if you forget everything that is related to function analysis, I would say that you have to focus and remember the definition of function. What is legitimate function and what is not legitimate function? Function is legitimate when there are elements, they interact, and there is a parameter and that uh, has been changed or maintained as a result of a function.